Hi all. When I was playing at the South End, there was the Jack Spiegel Memorial Tournament, which comprised of mostly GMs, uh, but with one IM, Lawrence Trent. In the first round, David Howell was absolutely crushed by Mark Hebden in what I think is a relative of the Barry attack, um, which is also um, sometimes referred to as the 150 attack. 150 named because... Um, it crushes 150s, uh, players that are ECF 150, that is. So how did this go, this uh, interesting attacking game? D4, and then how was playing black? He played knight F6, fine. He wanted the king's engine defence. Hebden plays, though, knight F3. So if it is going to be the king's engine, Hebden's um, delayed his C4. And he's also ruling out Simish variations against the king's engine. But after g6, lo and behold, he doesn't go through the main uh, Lion King's engine, but instead heads for the Barry attack. So knight c3 now. Now the King's engine player would be disappointed by this stage, because in fact they've got a kind of perk. And often they don't really want to play d6, because it's quite passive. You know, d6, e4, and it, unless they know the perk, this is quite uncomfortable. Howell plays d5, fine. He wants to stop e4 from white. Perfectly logical. Hebden pl now plays a move reminiscent of the London system, another form of torture for the black player. Um, so how plays bishop g7? Fine, he's, it seems a logical move. He, after all, he did play g6, so you can only follow up with bishop g7. Now Hebden plays a very crude-looking move. He plays simply queen d2. So this is the basis of, of the Barry or the 150 attack. That um, The idea is to exchange off this dark-squared bishop around black's king, and generally to follow up with moves like e3, bishop e2, knight e5 and h4. Apparently um, Niaz Mershed played this in Lloyd's Bat Masters one year and it was then taken up by Hebden and Summerskull as its chief British proponents. So here though, um, Hal played uh, c6, so waiting, um, not um, casting kingside immediately. So Hebden played bishop h6 following this crude attacking plan. After the exchange of dark squared bishops, it's now quite annoying for black who can't castle kingside. To be honest, this has become one of my um, concerns playing knight f6, this whole system to play against it. Um, you know, what does black do? Hal played now queen a5. So it's another logical move, it seems, to pin this knight to prevent white from playing e4, because then there'll be a knight that takes e4. Fine. But here now, perhaps this is a novelty in this horrible system. Hebden plays knight g5. So actually he's uh, reinforcing the idea that he's going to play e4. How now sort of played b5, which is kind of justified, I suppose, because there's a pawn on c6 to support it, and b4 might be a, a threat. So he's trying to discourage white from playing e4. Hebden plays it anyway, and he kind of, you know, uses it as a sort of gambit, reminiscent of the Staunton gambit now. So after knight takes e4, he played knight g takes e4, and after d takes e4, simply accepted the fact he was a pawn down, and played bishop e2. So later he's going to play f3, and rip open the f-file. Black played now knight d7, maybe trying to castle queenside eventually. However, in this game this didn't seem to happen. Hedden played castles, and after knight f6, now played f3. So we have a kind of, you know, gambit idea. After queen b6, Hebden simply protected the pawn, rook a d1. And after e takes f3 now, bishop takes f3, Hebden has positional pressure for the pawn. If this is a gambit position, it looks to be quite a reasonable gambit. Um, white's threatening all sorts of things in different variations. How played bishop a bishop e6, and after a4, it seems a bit precarious to castle uh, queenside now, with this diagonal about to be ripped open and the a-file. How played b4, and Hebden now played a5. The pawn's immune, of course, because of the c6 pawn. Um, so queen c7, and now knight a4. So Hebden's playing positionally now, getting his knight to c5. Not minding at all being a pawn down. After knight d7, he simply played knight c5, with this horrible threat of crunching black's pawn structure in the centre. 
So Hal took on c5, and after d takes c5, you'll note that now black can't castle any side of the board. So Hal decided here to play f6, and now Hebden increased the central pressure with rook fe1. And after bishop d5, queen g7, rook f8, Hebden nabbed a pawn back with simply queen takes h7, not worrying about this h file. It can't really be used for black by black unless black was able to connect the rooks and play rook h8, which would seem to be um, a Houdini act in this kind of position. After bishop takes f3, Hebden played g takes f3, not worried about these isolated pawns. He's got bigger fish to fry than that. Um, so rook d8, queen takes g6, check. So Hebden's now a pawn up. And black is still in trouble. After rook f7, queen g8, check. Rook f8, Hebden centralizes the queen, not minding about any rook h8s at the moment. Howell played rook takes d1, and after rook takes d1, rook h8. Hebden simply played rook d2, protecting that h-pawn. And now king f8 was played. Hebden puts more pressure on, on the black position with simply a6. So a quiet waiting move. The queen's uh, pinned down. It can't really go to f4. Let's have a quick look at queen f4. Just rook d8. King g7, queen e7. It's all over, according to Ribka. Just, just winning this rook. There'll be uh, no perpetual checks or anything. So black is tied down here. Hal played rook g8. And now have them simply played king h1. Now queen a5. So maybe trying to get in the back row. Unlikely. Hebden just played rook d1. Now after rook g5, f4 was simply played, encouraging this rook to come to the centre or take the pawn. Because after rook d5, Hebden played the crushing move rook g1, just, just mating black really in all, all variations, or winning huge amount of material if black wanted to play Ribka's move rook g5, just fg. So that was a completely crushing game. Um, let's have a look in overview and summary at it. So it was the Barry attack system with bishop f4 and Hebden simply exchanged off dark squared bishops and played knight g5 preparing e4. It's just, to me this game's too simple to be true. Both players grandmasters but it seems to me a very easy to play idea of just gambiting a pawn, getting loads of positional pressure and starting to play positionally now just on the queen side gaining that knight to the strong c5 square when it was taken on c5 black was unable to castle anywhere and now Hebden started getting some pawns back and in the final phase um, there was a few one-off threats from black which were easy parried and after this f4 you know there was the terrible move rook d5 but black really didn't have any better because if this kind of continuation this is a ribka variation Black's getting murdered because of the A pawn, and Black would run out of checks. So that didn't happen. Um, so after F4, Rook D5, Rook G1, that was the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed that game, and may consider this as an anti King's Indian system, which you can use as white. Thanks very much. Please leave any comments on YouTube.